I wanted to ask you about how you drifted from conservative to liberal. Why are you afraid of rejection? Am I afraid of rejection personally? No, yeah. but that's a pretty atypical view. Most of human history, all men had to do to get a partner was uh, have a job. And women locked out of the job market basically were like slaves to men. They had to date men because if they didn't, they'd be wives because they have no jobs. Um, now, over the past, especially like 20-ish years, um, it's changed radically such that... No, you. I thought you said some dumb shit. What did I say? Like, off whitey. And I, I think, think that, that is absolutely the reaction. I wanted to ask you about how you drifted from conservative to liberal growing up where you did in Omaha. Uh, did that happen because you received pushback in your online communities? You say that you were isolated a lot playing games in your room. Is that because of pushback you received there? Or did you receive that pushback in No, I've never life? changed my, I try never to change my political views based on pushback I get. I don't ever think of my political views. How did I get started way. cleaning carpets? Uh, yeah, yeah, but how did you? The, how did my you come political to... view started to change because when I started to get more money, I realized how f the world was when I was poor. I think the most conservative point in my life was probably when I was cleaning carpets, unironically. But then as I started to get wealthier and wealthier, and I started to see how like unbelievably different my life was with more money, it started to dawn on me how like completely unfair life was prior to that. Yeah. Uh, well. So you, it didn't really happen. That change didn't materialize until you were already an adult. Uh, basically, yeah, I guess, yeah. Uh, do you think that something I've noticed about you is you have a instinct to venerate institutions? Uh, uh, do that, I have an instinct? I think that was something that was heavily developed in me over the past probably two-ish, two to three years, I think. So you, you wouldn't say that when you were a conservative that you had venerated institutions at mm. that time? No, I don't think so. Probably not. I was probably too young to even oh. understand institutions or care about them much. Uh, I grew up, and I still am, conservative. Uh, I absolutely, uh, you know, venerated institutions for most of my life. Um, now, this is not really a mature view at this at this point, but I would say that this uh, instinct to venerate institutions can contribute to blind spots when we consider certain institutions. Uh, are certain institutions corruptible? Have you ever seen an institution that's been corrupted? Uh, I mean, any institution is, any anything should theoretically be corruptible, right? Right, absolutely. So uh, within, within the, you know, political sphere, have you seen institutions that were well-intentioned that have been corrupted beyond their purpose. What are some examples that stand out to you? Um, I think one of the recent things I heard was the FDA uh, approving a drug for Alzheimer's disease that was treating a thing, but not the condition itself. Um, that was sketchy. I think a few people resigned from the FDA board for that. I think that was a bad move by them. I agree with the people that resigned over it. Um, I guess that'd be one recent example. Um, I'm sure there are other examples too. I can't think of anything off the top of my head though. Uh, this may seem like a pivot, but what does uh, civic nationalism mean to you? Um, my, for the first thing I think of in my head is Nazi. Um, I, I don't know. Um, there was a there was a time period where uh, there was a bunch of content creators online who were all like very far right people, and they all called themselves civic nationalists, and then eventually they switched from civic nationalism to just saying that they were like full on like far right nationalists or whatever. But I remember there was a weird, this was back in like 2017, I think, when like civic nationalism was a big thing. I don't know what it actually means. That's just, that's what I associate with in my head. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with the online movement of civ nats, but I know that the ethno nats really hate the civ nats gotcha. as far as I can tell. Um, but civic nationalism is kind of this, I believe it's an idea that you, that that our institutions as, as a society are what bind us together. So the Constitution, our separation of church and state, okay. uh, our three branches of government, those would be institutions that bind us together as a civic population. Okay. Uh, so when when I hear somebody have a, a laudable, though perhaps myopic, not maybe describing you, uh, respect for institutions, 
I sometimes wonder if if they're not tending towards civic nationalism, towards I mean, towards an end of achieving some sort of national polity or social polity. Um, I don't know what that last word means. Polity. Yeah, like. Uh, a former process of civil okay repeat that last part again like uh just like a civic polity like a binding polity like we've got this 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 national polity between all of us where we all we all uh you know subscribe to the same institutions we respect them in a way that provides you know a rule book for how to conduct ourselves in a social manner with each other and we have maybe positive laws that are guiding right. principles okay what is your question or what are you asking or what are you saying or what is it what are you getting at well i guess i'm wondering if i mean po possibly if maybe you uh are in a way closer to a civic nationalist in some ways because of the way you talk about how we need to adhere to the institutions that we have in place like if you if you listen to Hassan Abi, he wants to tear down a lot of institutions. He he hates you know capitalism. He wants to see the situation totally restructured in a way that fits his political vision. But you don't really talk about restruct restructuring the you know the political system to you know to your particular win okay is that wait what is that are we just is the whole purpose of this conversation just to say that maybe i'm a civic nationalist I, I mean i guess if you think that's where my views align the most with then sure i guess i'm i guess i'm really asking if if you feel any kinship with the idea not really because i've never even really heard the term used that much before so not really so, two minute warning buddy two minute warning all right man uh i wanted to also ask you about uh, dating okay. you seem to, you seem to you seem to have these ideas that are formed around uh, uh, you know if you make a certain amount of money and you uh, you take care of yourself then you should be able to get a woman and, uh, I mean that's a good start I mean I not necessarily there are other things you might need to work on too right but are you sure like I mean, are you sure that your experience doesn't inform your view in a way that doesn't really make the situation analogous to, you know, the situation of your average viewer? Uh, nope, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, why are you afraid of rejection? Am I afraid of rejection personally? No, yeah. but that's a pretty atypical view. It's a pretty atypical view? Yeah. Uh, meaning not typical fear of rejection. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, my view of uh, not being afraid of rejection is atypical. Yes. Right. I understood it now. Uh, so I kind of feel that, that, you know, if you're not afraid of rejection, why haven't you gone to like bars and stuff and tried to pick up chicks there? Um, yes. mainly because I don't have the interest, I guess. I, I mean, I should, but I'm just kind of lazy. I haven't tried it before. Is it easier to, uh, is it easier to just do your sort of prowling online? For me, yeah, of course. It's just turning into a, uh, okay. It's because he can't bring his follower account to the bar, bro. Come on. I mean, I could, yeah, I could well, just brag about my socials, I guess, but. I mean, uh, so when you, when you date, uh, do you feel that your status as a streamer and your, you know, and and as a successful streamer sort of uh provides a a lubricating effect to the social uh inter intercourse with the woman you're seeking um for me in my life right now yeah of course yeah uh well i really think that dating for the average guy out here is really difficult do you really think do you think it's it should be easier or do you think it is easy or what um, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'd say dating is necessarily difficult. That's a really loaded, I mean, it could be, it just depends on how you view it, I guess. But I mean, it's going to depend on who you are. Like if you're a relatively social dude that does like one sport um, and you're in high school or college, dating is probably really
easy for you. Um, if you're a guy that's graduated and you work in a like tech heavy job and you play a lot of games online, dating is probably almost impossible for you because you don't even know where to find a girl in real life that's single, let alone like yeah. how to approach and talk to one. So it's going to depend like dramatically on what your life situation is. Yeah, I, I work from home, so I experience a little of that. And I think that the dating apps are just so bad. But um, the I, dating apps are very, very, very competitive for sure, but they're not impossible. Um, but I think that people get easily discouraged. Um, and I think people don't put in the right types of effort as well. I also see a lot of guys that just suck at talking on any app ever. But I mean, I don't know. I guess it just depends. On, on what people's particular problems were. I don't know. I was in LA, which I consider to be a pretty competitive market. Um, and when I looked for people on, um, when I looked for people on Tinder, I intentionally didn't link my stream shit because I, um, cause I wanted to find like normal people because I was getting really burnt out from streamer people at the time. Um, and I think when I was in LA, I probably hooked up like five or six times. And there was one girl that I super liked that I like formed like a really long, I'll say long, I, I like about a year, like decent, friendship with. She got jealous when I started dating Melina and we ended up not talking anymore. Um, but that was off of like not social media cloud or anything. Uh, maybe I got really, really, really lucky, but uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's impossible. Or, or it doesn't yeah. seem it's like it's as impossible as people make it, but there might be some markets that are harder or some people, I don't know, dude, I see the way that some people text and shit and it's like, holy fuck, like you're like actually schizophrenic. I don't know if you are or not, but. I mean, I would say that I have a hard time uh, I mean, I have a girlfriend, uh, but I have a hard time talking with the current generation because of the words that chat has observed that I use. Uh, so I just talk in a particular way, and I think it kind of it, it kind of has an uncanny valley effect on some people. But I suppose I'm a bit peculiar. But I hear a lot from other people and the data that says that you know. The top five percent of guys are the guys that are successful on dating apps. So, I mean, it depends on what you're looking for. Like the top five percent of guys aren't dating eighty percent of women; they're just hooking up with a lot of women. That top that like polygamy shit doesn't apply to dating; it only applies to fucking. If you're looking for people to like date and stuff, it's not it's not relevant. I don't think the top five percent of guys aren't all dating five women. There are there are women in my life that I've pursued that I've dated that I would not marry, and there are women in my life that I pursued that I would marry, but, you know, not date. I don't know what that uh, means. Or, Can I mean, you expand not, on not that? Would not date, but, you know, wouldn't want to, like, have a one-night stand with, say. Oh, so, do you, do you have that feeling about certain women where there are women that you would date but not to marry? No. No? No. So, But so, we, we should okay. clarify terms and definitions. What do you mean by date? Like if I'm dating somebody, then I, then go, I, I like the person enough to like live with them. Like I want to be with them as much as I can. If that feeling doesn't change, then I, that would be the rest of our lives. Hopefully that's Melina, I guess. Yeah. So I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is what, or what I'm working towards is that the top 5% of guys have, uh, a, you know, a lot of women available to them that they would date, but not marry. And maybe they won't, would date them, but because they are, you know, a six or seven out of 10, but uh, but they wouldn't marry those women. They would marry eight, nine, tens, so That's to speak. Right. Sure. And and so if the top five percent are hooking up with the the sixes, sevens, and eights that they don't want to marry, but and you know maybe dating for two or three dates, hooking up for weeks on end, hooking up for even months, uh, maybe what they're doing is they're teaching some women that they can achieve the top five percent male, but they are. Uh, training that that type of woman to crave th or or even believe that they can marry that male. Or All right, listen, homie. Going on male. too long. I love oh, wait. You. I mean, wait. Well, hold on, because he's hitting it. I, I I don't believe that to be the case. I know that that's like a really common talking point, but I don't I don't believe that to be the case. My here's this is my this is my feeling. This is a feeling, and it's hard to validate. I don't even know how you begin to empirically prove any of this. My feeling for dating markets that I've said a lot is that for most of human history. All men had to do to get a partner was uh, have a job. And women locked out of the job market basically were like slaves to men. They had to date men because if they didn't, they'd be f lives because they have no jobs. Um, now, over the past, especially like 20-ish years, um, it's changed radically such that men have to actually put in work in relationships to be like worthy or viable dating partners. It's not enough now that like any random schizo guy can just have a job and a woman's like, well, f 
have to marry him because I have no other way to earn money. Now women are earning money. So now the standards for men in relationships are getting very, very, very high. But the problem is that Red Pillars and all these other people online, when they talk about high standards, they think that it's just being a millionaire or looking like a super giga chad. When in reality, it probably just means like being somebody that you can emotionally relate to, that is like fun to be around, that has like a good amount of like maturity and like uh, emotional stability. And that these are traits that historically, not only do men not practice them, a lot of men will like make fun of it, say, oh, that's gay. You don't wanna be emotional, blah, 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 blah. So men have just like, men are completely behind the curve when it comes to actually training for any of these fucking qualities. They just can't, they haven't had any practice. They don't get it from their fathers, they don't get it culturally, and they don't like talk about it amongst themselves. Whereas women have been doing this shit for a long time. And you're in a weird spot where I think it's like 37% of women are okay being single, and it's like 24% of men. I think when I looked at a poll the last time I saw that. Because women have like better friendships, they do better on their own, they're like pretty happy. Um, men, outside of relationships, have like nobody that they can be emotionally vulnerable to. They have nobody they can open up to. They've got nobody that takes care of them, because um, bros don't do that for bros. So yeah, I don't know. That's like my broad take on it, but um, yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. I've probably uh, taken too much of it. Thanks, well, man. You're good. Appreciate Thanks. It. Be careful, buddy. Yeah. Wow. I thought you said some kind of dumb shit about mixed race people. To tell you the truth. What'd she say? No, you. I thought you said some dumb shit. What did I say? Um. Well, let me just ask you some questions. Um, do you think that mixed race can refer to someone who looks white? Um, it could. Not typically, but it could. Not in the United okay. States, but it's possible. Did you say not in the United States? Not generally in the U.S., no, but it's possible. You don't think in the United States that if you look, if your skin is white, that you're mixed race? Mm -hmm. I've never in my life heard somebody who's white referred to as mixed race. I've never heard that ever in any area, in any arena, in any part of the United States ever. No, but I, I guess it's possible. But like, for instance, like somebody like Irish and Italian mixed, I would never ever hear somebody say like, "Oh yeah, I'm okay, mixed well, race." Okay, well, I'm not I've talking. Never... To... Yeah. Well, when I say when I in this conversation, when I say mixed race, I'm like, generally, for instance, I'm referring to like you know someone who's half black, half white. Oh, a lighter skinned black person would probably refer to themselves as mixed race. That's probably possible for sure. That's kind of what I was talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, that could be because they're definitely living a way more unique experience than like somebody that's like half Russian, half German or something in the United yeah. States. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, fucking sure. random European people. I don't sure. Know about them. Or like half uh, Asian people or half like Hispanic people might have mixed race experiences depending on, but yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. I can't really speak to that, but I, I'm certain that, you know, half, you know, actually, have you, you know, I feel like in this conversation, there's some, like, it's always about, you know, half black, half white people, but you know about, like, hapas, right? Is that what they're called? Yeah, the half Asian Pacific, some bullshit, I don't remember. It's yeah, I mean, that. I feel like if you're talking about, like, problems that mixed race people, you know, face, like, they pretty much, you just have to look at those guys and, you know, they kind of are emblematic of it, right? Um, or I don't know. That, that's that's yeah, my they experience. Could be. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. Second, second uh, quotation here. Here's something you said. Ninety-nine percent of people with one black parent are probably going to be looked and treated as black. You yeah, stand I think by that's that? generally true in the United States. Yeah, I think the vast majority of people with black parents um, tend to look black or have black features. Yeah. When you say, well, those are. I feel like those are two different things. Like looking black and having black features, very different. For instance, I, I mean, you know, I, I have one black parent, and I would say that I have some black features, but I'm pretty pale. A lot of, you know, random people that I've met are confused as to what race I am. So Wait, can, do you have a picture of yourself? I'm not sending you a picture of myself. Okay. I mean, I don't know. If, if if you disagree on this point, there, I don't think that there's any, like, I didn't bring, like, a study that I can send to you to, to like, prove, like, oh, no, actually only 50% of, you know, mixed-race people, quote-unquote, look black, but... Yeah, I guess like, it'd be interesting it'd be... to see the numbers, but, like, from my experience with people that are, like, half, like, one, like one black parent, um, the vast majority of them are, like, they look black, um, at least insofar as the United States is concerned. Maybe if they go to, like, Somalia or Nigeria, they'd be, like, treated differently, but in the United States, they'd be like, oh, that's a black person. But, but I mean, I'm sure there are some people with a black parent that, 
either don't inherit the right genes or whatever that end up like being a lot less black passing or something, but um, I'm sure it's possible, yeah. Alrighty. Hold on. Wait. Um, Am I a mixed race person? Both parents are black but light skinned? I mean, you would just be called black. I don't know if, whether you're mixed race or not. It's going to depend on your ancestors, right? But I don't know. Go ahead. Sorry. I kind of forgot what I was going to say, honestly. Yeah, I don't think I. Ha I don't think I have. Um, there's nothing. I, there's no like argument I can give you or study that I brought. Well, what is that? Well, wait, you. wait, hold on. You're just asking questions. What? What is make your point? <laughs> well, my point was just that, you know, as a mixed race person myself, I thought that these were some, like, I don't know, kind of serious misconceptions that you had. Um, okay. About mixed race My people. Right. point when I was having the conversation was that they were having a day where they wanted black people to be able to celebrate their blackness and talk about black issues on campus, and they wanted white people to go to a separate place. And then they made a side addendum or whatever, where, um, where they were like, if you're mixed race, you can sort yourself accordingly. And that mixed race thing, 99% is only gonna apply to people that have like a black, they don't mean mixed race like half Irish, half Italian people. That mixed race was just referring to um, like black people, like people with one black parent probably. Sure. And yeah, I mean, in the context of Evergreen specifically, I don't even disagree with you. That that place seems like a, a genuine like um, like caricature of, you know, crazy SJW college or whatever. Although sure. I would say that um, I feel like at almost any other college in America, I, I don't even know if you would disagree with this, but like if you went to something like an event specifically for like mixed race people, but you looked kind of white, like I bet that, you know, even maybe I don't know. Even you maybe could go to these things, and it seemed like you had the impression that you know the reaction would be like "fuck off, whitey." And I, I don't think, think that, that is absolutely the reaction. Yes, at like at like almost any anywhere in America. Maybe I'll give you an evergreen because that place is crazy. But I like, feel like in almost any like I like I know of at least one half black friend who she looks clearly black. Like I would look at me like that's black. Like if I was mm -hmm. racist, I'd call her the N word. One, no, I'm just kidding. Sure. But like, she's like clearly black. And she told me that she's gotten shit before for having dreadlocks because she clearly looks, she looks like mixed, right? She looks like, mm -hmm. not like, the, not super dark. No, I get what you're saying, right? yeah. Yeah, but the, well, um, but like she, she, like she will occasionally get shit from other black people for wearing dreadlocks. And like, if she's getting shit for it, there's no fucking way that I could ever enter a space for mixed race people and not get like crucified. That'd just be well, my guess. I think those are two different things because one is getting shit from like other black people for not being black enough or you know for instance you know people in this very chat have just told me that i i like sound whiter you know acting white is like a big thing in black communities it's all meme but what i'm saying is that in your when you're in a space specifically for mixed race people i feel like one of the most common negative experiences relating to being mixed race is being excluded because you know, you don't look like the people around you or you don't look like you're how you're supposed to look. And so I feel like the idea that just because you come into there and you look a certain way that people would instantly mistreat you, it doesn't make sense to me because, you know, those are the people who have been mistreated for, you know, looking a certain way. Am I making sense here? A little bit, but I, this only works for people that look mixed. I, I would just look white. Like I, I don't, I don't, I would never be accepted in any of these places. <laughs> if even I really, if I went and I said I have a black parent, they would be like, "Bro, you need to get the fuck out of here." They wouldn't believe me. Uh, you're so, I, uh, I don't know what to say except you're so wrong. Like if you, uh, I, I, it depends on the place, obviously. But like, if you went to like a, a group, like, hey, mixed race, you know, club, we're talking about mixed race issues, and you go there, like, I, I'm sorry, like the, the, probably maybe even the single like, you know, issue that mixed race people face you know vis-a-vis -vis how they look is like not looking like the people around them or like oh you look too white to be around here you talk too white to be around here okay i i think we like i <laughs> i'm not to borrow from that fucking racist dude but like uh, literally like bl like fucking blue eyes like blonde eye, brown hair i think i i don't i feel like i would be accepting these faces but you know i, I at the end of the day all we can both appeal to is our life experience so you know maybe Maybe you're right. I mean, maybe I, wrong, I've but... been to I've been to some of these places, and you know yeah. there are people who are who look whiter than you. So I don't even know if that's physically possible, but okay. <laughs> True. Um, but it, but if yeah. if you have like a specific like mixed race club or something, 
and it's for like when you if you brought here's the thing if you broaden mm. it out to include Hispanic people you're in a way different ballpark there because like my mom well my mom might look like Hispanic now because she's been in Florida a lot but there are pictures of my mom you can find where she looks like a, she's like just a white person probably people would assume she's a white person when she gets a little mm -hmm. bit of sun she looks like clearly Hispanic but like um but like when, when Hispanic people are included yeah that that widens quite a bit but I don't think if it was a black community for black or mixed people, I don't think I would be accepted there at all. Nobody would oh, yeah. have well, a black parent. This whole time I've just been talking about, you know, general like mixed race clubs. I don't know if I've ever heard of like a specifically like black, white. Sure. Club. Yeah. If there, yeah. This was the, this, the context of this conversation was important because it had to do yeah, specifically no, sure, with Evergreen sure. that was specifically doing a day of remembrance that was specifically for black people. Um, there might be like broader... Uh, there might be broader, like mixed race clubs that that would accept me. Sure, that's possible. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, like I said, uh, when it comes to Evergreen, I, I agree with you completely. It's just that's kind of what I, uh, I don't know, wanted to. I felt like, uh, okay, you had oh. a bad impression there. Gotcha. Dude, why is why is your Discord so autistic, man? Well, a lot of mixed race people in there. <laughs> true. So true. All right, that's it for me. Okay, be careful, bud. Uh, wait, last question. Can we stream movies when you're canvassing, or do you not want us to? Um, probably can. I don't think I'm going to live stream anything, but I might. I might live stream. I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, I'm fine either way. I just want want the answer now. Yeah, sure. Yeah, the answer is yeah. Okay. Or then. maybe not, actually. I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll think about it before I end stream. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure now, actually. <laughs> All right. Talk to you. Bye. Okay. You do understand it's the slow blade that penetrates the shield, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure. Yeah, but I knew that. You, you should know, know that. that. You, I hope you would, because they tell yeah, it to you like four fucking times before. It's yeah, but important. you didn't. You didn't get it though when you were explaining it. You did it wrong. You like still didn't get it somehow. <laughs> I like so. I did it. They needed they to didn't, explain they it. They needed to do it five times. They, for me. they may have for you because you still didn't get it. You're like, I oh, just, it's red. <laughs> it's, I just that's want, bad. it's red. That's bad. That means they got him. It's the slow blade. You didn't get it. I you know, didn't. just. Do you know how much more res I want to give you? This yeah. is like I'm about to give you a fucking cheat code uh -oh. to be super respected, but you won't do it because you're too prideful. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If for the rest of your streaming career mm -hmm. you never give a food take, movie <laughs> take, or or music take, if yeah. you just don't talk about any of those things, you'll be so much more well respected Look by at how everyone. Threatened Dan is. Because, like, what are people going to have against you, right? They'll be like, ah, that guy Destiny, he just gets Ws. There's nothing. I can't. He God, he's just right all the time. Nothing. Never wrong about anything. You know? And, you know, that could be you. Could it be? You could be indestructible. But you give these weaknesses to your, to your critics. Oh, also, no women. You're going to be celibate moving forward also. That's another. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a weakness. Uh, yeah. So no, no food, no movie, no food, no movies, and no women or men. That's it for you. That it, dude, you follow my strategy. I'm telling you, six months. You're you're on Rogan, okay? Beyond Rogan, you have like a TV show on E. That's how big this will be for you. Gotcha. I'll keep that. Wait, I need to prove the haters wrong and throw up a 900 real quick. One second. Yeah, can you even do an 850 with both hands up? One hand up, I mean. No. It's just so... Ever since I saw that, I was just broken. Actually broken when you did it. You know, it's just like... Never meet your heroes and... You just fucking cheated. The two paw thing is fucked. No, Me it didn't. I missed the last one. Oh, I didn't account it. Thank God. Okay, not five. No, I'll take it. That's a big game, man. That's a big game, man. What's he saying? That's a bit. That's a big game. That's a. That's a big game, man. That's a. Big Destiny wants to be contrarian so bad he's not thinking. True. Yeah, that's why I'm not agreeing with fucking Infowars. Is because I just want to be contrarian. You got me, dude.